Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Um, in this particular episode, we're going to talk through Arrhenius' theory of acids and bases. Um, so focusing on this particular theory that we've come across, um, just give by way of giving you a quick overview, we're going to uh, talk about a, a sim some simple kind of definitions. Uh, we're going to look at the concept of dissociation. Uh, apparently I can spell, who knew? Um, Yep, so looking at the concept of dissociation or ionization, um, we're going to look at this thing that we are going to introduce called the hydronium ion, and um, we're going to then look at some practice examples, okay, of, you know, factoring in, thinking about um, some examples of dissociation or ionization, okay? So that's, that's kind of where we're going to begin, so let's do that. All right, so Arrhenius' theory, um, just to refresh your memory, was that an acid produces um, H plus ions in water. Okay, so this is kind of, that's his definition of an acid, and a base was that produces hydroxide ions in water. Okay, so that it's the, so the presence of either of these two ions when you put the substance in water, um, helps to characterize a substance as an acid or a base, or if it doesn't do either of those, then it's neither, it's a neutral substance. Okay, so um, that's that's kind of the, the definition, you know, that's the working definition we've been using so far, um, but that's that's kind of where this stems from. Okay, so if we're looking at, say, an example of an acid, you know, so let's say we take um, hydrogen chloride gas, so it's a, it's a molecular gas, and if we pump it into water, what happens is that that um, splits or dissociates, um, we'll look at that concept again in a second, into two substances, a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion, making it acidic. Okay, so therefore it's an acid. Okay, and then if we go for a base, and we say take solid sodium hydroxide, uh, very nasty stuff, the basis of things like Drano, uh, if you get it on your skin, watch out. Um, but when we put it in water, we get sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So therefore, making it a base. Okay, so fitting that those definitions. So classic kind of examples of what Arrhenius was talking about. Um, now, there's heaps of other examples that we could give, um, and I'll, I'll kind of illustrate that this concept a little bit more now. We're going to start to talk about this idea of dissociation. Okay, um, so that... We're using this word or di dissociation. Okay, so is this idea of splitting apart into ions? Okay, so taking a, a, a compound or like so a neutral kind of molecule or a, a complete um, complete neutral substance that it's it's kind of it's this, this full kind of combination. And it, and it breaking apart into its components, which are ions, okay, not just kind of, you know, things, you know, splitting a particle accelerator into atoms, but, but this actual saying, okay, well, it, it's taking something that becomes ionic that, that's, that splits, okay? So let, let's say um, we kind of look at, say, our hydrogen chloride example that we looked at there, okay? Um, actually, what I might just quickly redraw, redraw that, sorry. I know you hate when I do this, but there's a reason, trust me. Okay, so if I have hydrogen chloride, okay, if I had different colored pens, I'd use it. All right, so we have hydrogen and chloride kind of section, and then what happens, so this is as a, as a gas, and then we put it into water. Okay, so it, it goes into water, and then what happens? That we end up with the hydrogen part that becomes separate, and we end up with the chloride part that becomes separate, but what happens is that this bit um, has a positive electrical charge, and this bit has a negative electrical charge. So it's not just kind of separate atoms, but we have a positive ion, remember that the, the word we talk about with that is a cation, and then a negative um, ion, which is our anion. Okay, same sort of thing if I had Na, and then my OH combination, my hydroxide combination over here, okay, um, as a solid, we place it in water, and we end up with our sodium, which is a positive chunk, and our hydroxide, 
which is a negative chunk. Okay, so that's dissociation, this idea of taking something that was combined and it's splitting apart. Okay, so there's, so that that's kind of key to this theory, that that an acid is something that will produce hydrogen ions, or, or a base being something that produces hydroxide ions. The way that that production happens is by taking the substance and it breaking apart, because the water is around it to help that happen. Okay, so the water molecules kind of surrounding those particles and helping to pull them out of the bigger structure um, to become separate, and then and then kind of forming this little bubble this, that surrounds that particle that keeps it helps to keep it separate. Okay, now now one of the, the one of the ways that this actually works when you think about it is that we recognise that a that a hydrogen ion, okay, you know, so if I if I were to kind of draw that that neutral atom, it has one electron orbiting it. If we take that one electron away, all we have is that one proton. Um, and so actually, this is an incredibly um, reactive and or kind of like a, a very unstable sort of thing to just kind of float around. It doesn't actually live by itself. So when we talk about hydrogen ions being produced in water, in reality, what we're making is this thing called hydronium, which is H3O plus a polyatomic ion. So so really, what's happening is okay. So we have um, a hydrogen ion that's forming. Okay, that's so that's it's being being made because this acid is splitting apart or, or whatever. And then you have, um, let's draw it around this way for some simplicity. Okay, so we've got um, an oxygen atom connected to two hydrogens making water. And what happens is that um, this proton, which is just this single nugget of positive charge, um, becomes attracted to one of the lone pairs of an electron uh, of, of an oxygen atom on one of the trillions of water molecules that are surrounding it right next door. So what happens is that kind of attacks it, or that kind of that lone pair of electrons kind of pulls it in. And so then what we get, we get this um, hydronium ion, which has coordinate covalent bond um, that looks like this. And then we say, okay, we recognize that because of that combination, it's actually got a positive charge overall because of the number of you know protons and electrons that we have in that overall structure that we've got one more positive charge than we do negative charges okay so this is our this is our hydronium okay so when we are talking about hydrogen ions being formed we're actually talking about the presence of hydronium ions in water because that's what we'd actually find if we're looking for it and if, when we're trying to measure things like pH which we'll look at in future this is the presence of this is what we're actually going to be observing and measuring with our instruments and looking at with our color change of our indicators that there is no such thing as a container of hydrogen ions they are too reactive too unstable to stay exactly where they are so even in highly concentrated acid solutions they will be found as hydronium ions okay so that's j just you know um, so you know that kind of where that factors in. And when we start to talk about hydronium, when we start to write equations with it, that's kind of where it's coming in. Now, sometimes what we will still do, you know, along the lines of, of recognizing that a previous model can still, that's simpler, even if it's slightly wrong, can help us. Often we will use in equations, we'll still talk about hydrogen ions. It's not wrong to do so um, because they, they are a thing that really exists. They just, you can't get a container of them. So... Um, even though we know that in water what we'd have is hydronium and it would be more correct to always use that in an equation, sometimes for simplicity while we're getting used to the idea, we will still write equations with hydrogen ions being involved. Okay, just so don't bake your noodle over that one. Okay, but so alright, so let's let's um, have a look at some of the, the practice questions that we've kind of got there. Okay, to help, I'll, I'll um, do it in terms of an equation and I'll see if I can illustrate this underneath as well. Okay, so let's have a look at this example, which is, of course, sulfuric acid. Okay, so now sulfuric acid um, is made up of... Okay, now I'm not, draw, I'm not actually drawing in the bonds. Okay, but we've got one sulfur with surrounded by four oxygens. And then we've got two H's attached onto that. Okay, so they're actually, they are actually connected by covalent bonds here that are easily broken, but that's not important right now. We're just visualizing this center bit with two of those. Okay, and so then what happens when we put it in water? Okay, um, that then we're going to dissociate. We're going to form hydrogen ions 
And then we're going to form this center bit, which is a sulfate ion. Okay, now, so if I'm to, to look at that, so I'm going to do that. I've got my S with my O's, my, you know, so all the stuff that's in the dashes, recognizing that that has two negative charges overall. Um, but then looking at my equation, I can see, right, well, I started with, with two of these blobs. I've currently only got one of these blobs. Um, so I need to acknowledge the existence of a second one. I need to put a two out the front of that. Now, what I can do um, to show that these are now dissolved, you know, it's only because these are in water, is that we put aqueous in there. Now, when you're writing equations for this, that you will, st if, if you leave out the aqueous for all the ions, they will assume that it's aqueous because you wouldn't write a separate ion unless it was dissolved in water, okay, because they wouldn't exist. All right, so what we have here, this is dissociated into hydrogen ions and sulfate ions, okay, and so we have a two to one ratio here because of the nature of that structure. Okay, let's have a quick look at the second example, which is calcium hydroxide, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, so we've got calcium hydroxide. Okay, note the formula that we've got here. Okay, so it's going to, we're going to get dissociation, so we've got our calcium ion, K2+, plus because it's in group 2, and it's aqueous. We know that we're talking about dissolved in water. Okay, and then I'm going to get my hydroxide ion. Okay, so if I've got CA over here, and I've got OH, dot, 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 OH, dot, dot, dot. So looking at that formula, recognizing that this means I've got two lots of the hydroxide ion in my compound. Okay, for every one lot of calcium, that means that I'm going to end up with a calcium over here, which is 2+. plus. Okay, and then if I've got an OH over here, dot, 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 dot. Now, I know that the hydroxide ion is 1 minus. Okay, I've written it up here, but also it's something you should remember. Um, but now again, looking at what I've got, I've got 1 over here, but I have 2 that I'm starting with, 2 because I had a 2 to 1 ratio. So I've got to draw a second one in this diagram that I'm doing here. And that means that I need to put a 2 in my equation. So that means for every 1 mole, of calcium hydroxide I started with, I end up with two moles of hydroxide ions when it's put into water. Okay, now please pay attention to, th to, to that detail here, because that sort of thing is going to factor in when we start to look at what acids and bases will do when they react together in solution. Okay, that we, we need to account for exactly how many moles we have. All right, so we've talked about um, Arrhenius' definitions, we talked about the concept of dissociation, we described the formation of this thing called hydronium, and we've also looked at a couple of quick examples of um, Arrhenius acids and bases uh, forming. Um, so I hope that this is helpful. Um, thanks very much for watching and bye for now.